Hi, I'm here to talk to you today about the Ash Honors Award. So what is the Honors Award and why does Ash give it? Well, it's in the name. Uh, it's an opportunity for trainees to participate in research uh, to get themselves set up for a career as physician scientists. Uh, so what is it composed of? You can see here it's $7,000, $5,000 to spend as you wish, and $1,000 for two years to come to the Ash meeting. Uh, it's mentorship, which is the most important part. And then it's also street cred. That's something to put on your CV, something to talk about when you go for interviews, for a residency fellowship, uh, whatever's important for you. Who can apply for it? Any med student with at least a year left and also first and second year residents. When is the deadline? Uh, February of 2020. So if you uh, want to apply for that, go ahead and look on the website or Google Ash Honors. It will show up and give you more information. So what was my project? Uh, it was basically this idea to use some new tools, some machine learning, artificial intelligence, whatever you want to call it, to help clinicians get from point A to B. Point A is a sick patient sitting in front of you. Point B is a diagnosis. For most of the hematologic malignancies, the most important thing in diagnosis is going to be the bone marrow biopsy. Bone marrow biopsies uh, are, not, are not always successful. And when they are successful, uh, they're painful. They cost a lot of money. And there's this problem where very smart people looking at the exact same slide can have different opinions on what they're seeing. So you can see that here in the orange and the blue. This shows for the same image in a slide, uh, pathologists disagreeing on what they're seeing. This is not anything uh, against the pathologist. This is because this is a hard problem. So can we build tools to help us all get to the right diagnosis and do so in an intelligent way? Uh, what is machine learning? It's basically a set of strategies. It's a whole bunch of different algorithms where you dump your data in one end, stir it around a little bit, and then get some answers out of the other end. One of the problems in machine learning uh, today in medicine is that there's a lot of snake oil going around, as you can see on the next slide. Um, the problem with snake oil, interestingly enough, wasn't that snake oil doesn't work. It does, but Clark Stanley's snake oil didn't have any snake oil in it. People didn't know what they were getting when they got it. Machine learning is kind of the same way. You can have a really great model that's accurate, but you don't know why it's making the decisions it's making. So we wanted to see if we could do a little bit better. Instead of just giving you something where the output is, is this a hot dog or not? Is this CMML or is this MDS? Can we give you that output, but then also explain why the machine thought that so that you could use it as part of your clinical reasoning? So you can see here, uh, the first project was uh, pretty successful in explaining itself. On the top, you can see for the entire cohort, the most important variables that the model used to make its predictions. And then B and C, we'll look at bigger versions of these later, two individual predictions for patients that show you the things that contributed to that. Um, so it was a cool project and it went well. And I showed it to some folks. We got excited about it. We got some more data. We included some more entities. Went from just differentiating between two to differentiating between eight. So I had to build uh, some more advanced tooling to support that. Um, first question is, uh, you know, we build this model, how does it work? Well, the recall, which is the sensitivity, was pretty high. Uh, the precision positive predictive value was also high. So the overall model works pretty well. That's cool. Um, but can we explain why? It's going to be very important for a clinician to ever want to actually use a tool like this. Uh, so uh, we have it explained for the entire cohort for all the diseases you can see color coded there. What are the variables that played into that prediction and relatively how were they important for each prediction? And you can look at these and think, what do I know about the diseases? Do these make sense to me? And I think these do. Uh, you can see the clinical variables there. Uh, this is the secret sauce though. This is one patient you put in their information and the machine gives you out on the other end all of the things it was thinking about and a supported reasoning for why it thought each disease. So you can see there on the bottom, polycythemia vera was not likely in this patient. Their hemoglobin was too low and they didn't have a JAK2 mutation. So uh, this is what it would look like. You're not supposed to be able to read this for all of the diseases under consideration. All of the red variables push the prediction up, the blue variables push it down. Um, so it's a pretty uh, neat project. It's automated differential diagnosis. And, and it's meant to not make the decision for you as in hot dog, not hot dog, but this is what's more or less likely. You can do with it what, what you will as you're trying to figure out where to go in the face of incomplete information. Um, and also assist the hematopathologist uh, as well as the clinician um, sitting in front of the patient. Another project that I attempted that was not nearly as successful was to get the machine to look at the bone marrow biopsy and figure it out by itself looking at the image. I banged my head against this for a long time before I realized, we realized that we needed more help and we brought in friends for pathology. So that's another big kind of takeaway from my whole year. Number one, you should apply for honors. There's nothing to lose. It's a really great program. I've had a wonderful time. Two, if you're going to do anything with machine learning, help it think like a doctor rather than like a machine. And two, if you can do any project, regardless of the subject, don't be an island. Bring in friends, collaborators as early as possible to help you out. I want to say thank you to my collaborators at Cleveland Clinic, 
at the Munich Leukemia Laboratory, of course, the American Society of Hematology for providing this opportunity, and thanks to you for coming out today, uh, listening to this talk. And I'm happy to take any questions later on. Thanks.